What's happening guys? Today we're gonna to learn an easy dual lighting effect here in Photoshop. So let's get started. Hello friends, my name is Brendan from BeWillCreative.com and on this channel we love to talk about photography, photo editing, and all of that good stuff. So if that sounds like something that you would be into, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss a video. Now today we're gonna to talk about an easy dual lighting effect that you can create in Photoshop using two different gradients. Now this effect works best when you have a portrait that is taken in a studio or has a dark background behind it. Because when you apply those gradient effects onto it, it's not going to discolor the background too much. However, at the end of this tutorial I'll cover how to refine those gradients so it only affects your subject and not the background if you want to apply this effect into non-studio type portraits. So with that let's hop into Photoshop and see how it's all done. So here in Photoshop we need to start adding the colors onto our subject using our gradients. Now you can click and drag the gradients out with a gradient tool but I find that using a gradient fill layer is a little bit more effective because you can customize it a little bit more later on if you change your mind on colors or looks or things like that. So to create a new gradient fill layer we'll go up to layer down here to new fill layer and then gradient. I'll just leave this set to gradient fill one, click OK. Now that you have a gradient applied onto your image and your gradient fill dialog box open, we're gonna make sure that the gradient we have chosen is in fact the foreground to transparent gradient. So that means we have a solid color that transitions into transparency. So with that selected, click OK. And from here, we can adjust the angle however we want, but since I would like to see exactly where that middle point is because I want it to go down the middle of his face, I'm gonna click on that scale, bring that down so I have a nice harsh edge to my gradient. And from here, it's, I find it a little bit easier to angle and position that gradient to fit where I want. Because again, this gradient is gonna become the lighting effect on our subject. So from here, I can now go and move this gradient over because I want this sort of harsh line to be more closer to his face. So I'll click on the gradient editor. I'll click on this top box here at the opacity stop and I'll just move this over like so. It's gonna move that starting point of the transition of the gradient a little bit further up and basically reposition the gradient so it's more on the subject's face. So now that I'm happy with that, I'm gonna go ahead and change the color. And we can do that by double clicking on the color swatch over here in our gradient. For this bottom color, I wanna choose a teal, blue, something like this, maybe cyan, I guess. Again, you can change this color later on if need be, so you don't have to get too hung up on it. I'll click OK, click OK, and I'll click OK one more time. From here, with my gradient fill layer selected, I'll change the layer blending mode from normal down here to color, and that's going to apply that color and those hues onto my subject and onto the image. So now it looks really nice, like a lighting effect on his skin. Now all we have to do is do the exact same thing on the other side. So layer, New fill layer and gradient. I'll just leave this gradient fill too. I'm gonna once again bring that scale down so I can easily see where that harsh edge is. And then I'll reposition that angle so it's basically matching up on the other side of the initial lighting effect. So now that looks pretty good there. I'm gonna go into my gradient and then you can adjust that starting point if you would like to, like so. If everything looks good, then you don't need to do that. And then I will change the color by double clicking on this color swatch. And then I'll pick a nice reddish pink color here, something like this. Click OK, click OK, and click OK. Now with that gradient fill two layer selected, I'll go to normal and then down here to color once again. And that's going to apply that color onto his skin like so. And it looks pretty good if you ask me. However, if you want to change this color, let's say you're like, I really don't like this red. I want it to be a little bit more pink. Well, all you have to do is double click on that gradient fill layer. And then you can access that gradient fill dialog box again, and you can go through and change that color as need be. It's super easy to do, and that's the beauty of using a gradient fill layer rather than a gradient painted onto a new layer. Now with that said, I think I might also just increase the scale here just so it's a little bit softer on his face. And I'll just type something into like 20, and that looks a little bit better to me there. Now at this point, our lighting effect is complete, but if you're like me, the background and how discolored it's become sort of bothers me. So I only want this lighting effect to take place on my subject's body and not on the background. So there's two options that you can do. The first option, and this will only really work if you're using a dark background and you're in a studio or something like this, is if you double click on your gradient fill layer, you can use the blend if sliders. Now we talk all about the blend if sliders in another tutorial that I'll link down below. But in a nutshell, you can basically limit what exposure ranges certain layers will be visible on. So with this gradient fill layer selected, I can just 
drag up these shadows and notice how it's going to start to disappear from the shadows on my photo. Now the problem here is that if I just drag up the whole slider at once, it has these harsh edges, it doesn't look very good. However, you can add a feather to this by holding Alt or Option, clicking on that point, it's going to split it apart, and now it's going to just make that a little bit more subtle and add a nice feather to it like so. I think that looks pretty good to me right there. I'll click OK. And then we can do the same thing with our other gradient fill. So double clicking on that gradient fill to open the layer style dialog box, going to the underlying layer blend if option, holding alter option, clicking and dragging out on that shadow slider, and that's gonna get rid of that color in the background for us. Click OK. And now we have that lighting effect that isn't really applying to the background, but it's all over the person and it looks really nice. Now with that said, there is a very slight discoloration still in the background. So if you wanna take it one step further, you can even cut out your subject and apply that selection onto your layer mask. So the easiest way to do that, clicking on your image layer, we'll go to our properties panel, and then just go down to select subject. This will automatically select your subject for you and you don't have to do any fancy cutting out or selection methods. Now we want to make the opposite area selected. So we'll hold command or control, shift and I to invert that selection, switch the selection area around. And then we'll just click on the gradient fill layer here like so. Switch our foreground color to black. And then we'll hold alter option and delete to fill that foreground color with black. We can go click on the other gradient layer mask and do the exact same thing once again. Press Command or Control D to deselect. And now the background is completely unaffected by the gradients because we've applied them onto a layer mask. And now the lighting effects take place on our person. They look super realistic and they add a fun lighting effect without all the fancy gear and lighting gels that you need to do this in camera. All right guys, so that's all it takes to create a dual lighting effect in Photoshop, just two gradient layers and you can do whatever you like with the blend of sliders and cutting out the image if you want to refine where that lighting effect is taking place. So if you enjoyed this tutorial and you learned something today, then make sure to hit that like button so it really does make a difference. And also consider subscribing to stay up to date with more tutorials just like today. Anyways, my name is Brandon from BeWellCreative.com and I'll catch you back here next time for another new tutorial. See you then.